So guys, let's start with the limitation of the logistic regression. Well, the limitation of the logistic regression is that it doesn't give us the consistent decision boundary. Okay. So let's say this is our training data and we train logistic regression on this data to give us the following decision boundary. And if we shuffle the same training data, now you will see that the logistic regression will give us a different decision boundary. And if you keep on shuffling the same training data, logistic regression will not give us a single decision boundary, but altogether different decision boundaries in all the scenarios. Okay. And hence it is very difficult to obtain the most optimal or best optimal decision boundary out of, out of all these optimal decision boundaries. Okay. Now the question arises is that how do we know that which decision boundary is the most optimal or best optimal decision boundary. Okay. So guys, the most optimal decision boundary is that decision boundary, which is having the maximum margin among all the optimal decision boundaries. Okay. Now the question arises is that what is the margin of the decision boundary? Okay. So guys, now let's see what is the margin of the decision boundary? Well, the concept of the margin of the decision boundary is pretty simple. It is actually the distance of that specific decision boundary to the closest data points. So suppose this is our decision boundary. And if we com compute the distance of the decision boundary to the closest data point, which are these two distances, and if we select the minimum of these two distances, that means this distance is going to be the margin of the decision boundary. Yes. Okay. So suppose if we have any other random decision boundary, then with this decision boundary, this is going to be the margin of that decision boundary. If we suppose have any other decision boundary, so for this decision boundary, this is going to be the margin of that boundary. So guys, that is what margin is. So I hope you got the idea. So guys, now let's try to understand that what is the concept behind maximum margin boundary. Okay. So suppose guys, this is our training data. And on this training data, we trained a decision boundary, which is the blue decision boundary. And we calculated the margin uh, from the closest data point of both the clusters. And this is going to be the margin of our blue boundary. Similarly, we have another boundary, which is the red boundary. And in a similar manner, we calculated the margin of our red boundary, which is going to be this distance. And guys, suppose if we select one of these two decision boundaries to perform classification, then definitely on training data, one of these two decision boundaries will perform perfect classification on the training data. But if our testing data in future becomes slightly different from our training data, then this is going to lead a lot of misclassification as you can see here. So guys, if you select one of these two decision boundaries, it's going to perform very badly on the testing data, which is not a good thing. Therefore, guys, there is a need to select the decision boundary with the maximum margin from the closest data point of both the clusters, which is our decision boundary D2. As you can see that it has got the maximum distance from the closest data points of both the cluster uh, points. Uh, so guys, in that case, even if our testing data is going to be slightly different from our training data, as you can see here, that the orange decision boundary is going to perform very good classification on the testing data and hence it will reduce the chance of doing misclassification. So guys, that is the whole reason behind maximum margin decision boundary and that is what maximum margin decision boundary is. Okay. And guys, that is the whole idea behind support vector machines. So basically support vector machine tries to find out the decision boundary, which is having the maximum distance from the closest data point of both the clusters. And as you can see that those closest data points are actually called support vectors. And guys, that is why the name of this algorithm is support vector machines. Okay. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you.